Ian Kusan, congratulations on uh, winning the SOCAN Yan V. Matichek Award uh, for uh, classical and uh, contemporary music. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to receive the, the award this year. And the award is for the work that, that was done in 2020. Can you talk a little bit about the work, the composing you were doing in 2020? Yeah, 2020 was a weird year, obviously for everybody, but um, it was a year where I, I, I had the opportunity to write a bunch of interesting works. Worked on, on an opera for young audiences for the Canadian Opera Company, and then a number of chamber works. I wrote a, a, an oboe sonata and a violin piano piece, and a work for uh, sound streams and two other little works here and there. So it was, a, it was a productive year, in spite of the fact that it was a weird year for, for all of us with the pandemic. It sounds like you were busier than ever, but I imagine that busyness was, I mean, it's a little different when you're having to write to a target of the performance, whereas this year you were just writing without that target. Yeah, it was it was certainly a year of writing with the question mark of whether or not there would be performances. Some of them, interestingly, did happen, and they happened in digital iterations, uh, so that was really cool. Um, several of them are still waiting to happen, so there were a few works, uh, at least three of the works, four of the works that I wrote in 2020 that, that are still awaiting um, their premieres, which keep getting pushed back. But, uh, right. but so there'll be a glut of performances at one point, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, 2021 and 22 are gonna be full of Ian Cousin uh, <laughs> works being performed in their, I guess, premieres, right? Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've done sort of interesting work with all kinds of organizations. You've been the composer in residence at the Canadian Opera Company for 2019 to 2021. You've worked at the NAC. Um, uh, and where you've had access to like great players and a kind of an education in, in what you're doing. And uh, the latest is you've joined the Banff Center. Can you talk about what's happening uh, upcoming in Banff? Yeah, the Banff program also came about in 2020. Um, so a long-standing program, Opera in the 21st Century, that's run by Joel Ivany, at least for the, the last number of years. It's an exciting place for um, young opera singers and opera creators to to engage with the art form. And um, this year was really special because they brought in two additional um, uh, co-artistic directors for the program, myself and Karen Slack, uh, who is an American soprano. And we've been able to bring to the program a sort of different lens to the work that we bring to opera, which is looking at both indigenous representation in opera and art song and black representation in, in opera and art song. And so it's been a, it's been a fun year of exploring um, the, the peripheries of the art form, at least what has historically been on the peripheries, and considering the future of an art form and how underrepresented voices or unrepresented voices can have significant um, place and and in both the creation and, and the performing of, of operatic work. I'm interested in how, how uh, a young boy from Midland, Ontario discovers opera. That's kind of, <laughs> you wouldn't expect it. I wouldn't expect it in Midland anyway. How did that happen for you? You know, opera is one of these um, art forms that I think is is best summarized by saying it's, it's a form of storytelling. And I think that way, root of connection or entry point was the way that kind of got me. I remember music teachers that would tell me about opera and walk me through stories of opera. And really from a storytelling perspective, that captured something of my imagination. Then marrying that with the music and the, the voices and the orchestral palette and, you know, scenic design. And it was just overwhelming. And, and I mean, I, I kind of wonder, how could you not love it? Like a film composer, your work tends to be very collaborative. I mean, as you said, you mentioned the scenic design and, of course, the libretto and, the, you know, the people who are writing the con the text of it. So it, um, how do you find the process of collaboration? And do you find that you have to compose kind of with that text in mind? Absolutely. Uh, so I, I am a composer who thinks from text. So I use the text as, as the informing point or like the jumping off point for all of the music. And collaboration is... It's a scary thing because you have to really negotiate a relationship to, to figure out how to make that work well, where you're honoring multiple people's voices and ideas, but at the same time, hopefully guiding the project along a particular vision and path that you've set for it. So it's a negotiation process. It's a relationship-based um, process, but I, I, I love it. And I think opera is the most collaborative art form. So Absolutely. it's a great proce pro process to be a part of it. 